Okay, I found this tool. How cool is that? It's a little nut driver, but it's a 10. So it fits on all this 10 kind of stuff. So anyway, I'm gonna start taking off the fuel rail today and getting this out. And all this stuff comes out pretty easily because I've got it all designed now to come apart real easy. That's one of the main reasons for this somewhat temporary air filter uh, thing here is all I have to do is just take this screw out this plug and these guys here which are basically super easy they're not even torqued down super tight just even of just a cheap pair of pliers because I decided everything on this car I just want to make it all easy to work on all the time because I just assume I'm gonna be working on it all the time so I'm Okay, I've got my bucket ready to go underneath. It's a nice big bucket. I've got the lower radiator hose pinched off with some uh, channel uh, vice grips down there. And what I'm going to try to do is drain coolant out of the engine, but not so much out of the radiator. So when you're taking apart hoses, obviously, especially on an old car, spray a little bit of soap with water or some degreaser here. And then what you can do is start working it. Start, you can start working it uh, back and forth with a screwdriver. I can't show you with, with the camera, but you get the idea. Get that soapy water in there and gently gently make sure it's loose all around make sure it's it's moving gently and then add more soap as you're doing it and and so this will come off nice and easy without damaging the, the hose because uh, you know unless you feel like replacing every hose you touch you better learn how to uh, get them on and off without breaking them and uh, damaging them even if even if you are going to buy a new one down the road uh, it's better to try to keep them intact just because that hose might be harder to find in the future. Okay, so as I'm taking off these bolts, these hex head cheese bolts, if you will, even though they're not technically a cheese bolt, I don't know. It's called cheese bolt because of the uh, the uh, looks like a like a wheel of cheese. Anyway, these guys here are a little stubborn, so I wanted to show a good way to work on when you're doing that this kind of stuff on the top of a 944 is if you use a, a long ratchet or a long a long guy like that then you can put it in like this take your this guy your little folding mini guy and then you could like wake up the bolt by beating on it a bunch of times plus it's a good way to get it down in but the other cool thing about this setup is if it's too tight and it won't move with this tool and you can feel this bending then you basically want to stop there and do a little bit of lubrication Lub lubrification do some lubrification with some with some dragon spit that's what i like and i just make this out of uh i just made this actually out of um atf fluid and uh, uh acetone anyway so i plug the holes a little bit here and uh just shot that in there and I'm gonna let that kind of find its way in there point being is with this kind of setup you'll know when you've put enough torque because you can't put a lot of torque on this because it's short and this will twist so if, if it's not, not moving save yourself the trouble of doing something breaking something or whatever just slow down lube it up until it'll work with a tool that doesn't have a lot of power that way, worst case scenario, you gotta come back tomorrow. Okay, I'm gonna call it at two o'clock in the afternoon. This engine is not running. 
but I've got it all taken apart. So what I'm going to do now is go over a few things that I did to get here. I had to put uh, some dragon spit on these bolts to get them loose. And then I've filled in these holes with, these are socks wrapped in Ziploc. And the reason why I do that is I want it nice and clean, obviously, in, in the bores. I don't want anything to fall in there. But I also want to see if anything I get in there is there. So if a little bolt or a little piece of junk or whatever ends up in anywhere around these, I can see it. So now I'm going to vacuum it up with my the help of my camera person and vacuum operator cat she's gonna hit the button and so I'm just vacuuming around probably hang on to your little caps I'm just trying to remove as much stuff as I can while it's dry and then I'll come back and wipe it up with some carb cleaner okay pop suction <laughs> Thank you, nurse. So, a couple of things. The uh, you can tell the gasket was installed a little bit wrong here. You can also see right there. Um, but in general, it looks pretty good. I'm just going to continue to take it apart. This is pretty greased up and oiled up. I've already tested the other one. The other one's good, so. I'm just going to finish getting rid of all this stuff, take it all out, and uh, go inside and be cool for the afternoon. You always want to wipe away from the internal part of the part that you're working on. And as I'm doing this, I just keep rolling to a, a nice dry spot every time. In my super readers that I showed you guys uh, yesterday, um, shoe goo is the glue that you use on the. And I love these things now. Now I, I, they when I was working with them outside, um, I lost them. Or I set them down somewhere, didn't, and I tried to to work without them yesterday in the hot in the the hot sun and the bright sun, and and I absolutely was like night and day. Once I got used to the fact that they have the the blue blocker lenses, and also the 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 circle cutouts. The original glass in the goggles was tinted, and so I didn't want it to look through two layers. So I just drilled this out with a uh, paddle bit, actually and then glued the, the reader lenses on there, but it's amazing how outside the extra shielding around your eye can, can really help see what you're doing. And it's also good for in here too, but outside is where you really notice the benefits of uh, having the extra lens and stuff. So I'm just gonna keep cleaning all this. Let me, let me show you how, what I do when I get to this, these RTV areas. You can take this and you bend it just a little bit. And that's just enough to kind of put a little edge on it. But very gently. The key is I want to get all the I want to get all the big pieces out of the way first. And only then, once I've got see cuz right there there's still some RTV in the little pits and things. I'm not worried about that yet. All I want to do is get anything that's big enough to scrape off. That's what I want off right now. And then I want all these pieces, especially the, you know, these chunky areas. I want all that stuff gone out of my way. That way they won't find their way into places where they're not supposed to. 
Because on a job like this, I'm not getting paid to do this. So I can sit here for an hour and just clean this one this one surface. I could just sit here for an hour, just relax. I got my chair right here. Um, as soon as I turn off the camera, I'll put on some YouTube or some uh, music or whatever. But you get what I'm saying. Make a get a comfortable place for yourself to work inside that's clean. You know, if you've got a nice garage, then you know you know what to do. This is more for the guys like you know, like me, the single dudes living in apartments. Okay, so I'm slowly but surely getting this surface cleaner, stopping at each, after each pass, I'm stopping because you see I got a little bit of toilet paper in here, right there. So after each, after each thing, I'm stopping to look and see if I got, you know, if I had proper shopper towel, shop towels, if I had a car. If I had a car, I could drive to a place where they have things called shop towels. Okay, that's what I'd recommend. If not, toilet paper. But with toilet paper, you just have to be careful um, of little little bits. But this this area here is looking pretty good. Okay, so now what I'm doing is this is some uh, 1500 wet dry paper. And so after I cleared this off and got all the, the grease off the face of this with the carb cleaner, now what I'm doing is I'm actually wet sanding this with water. Um, and I, what I did, I've done, I'm taking a guitar pick and I put it in here like this and I wrap this around, okay? So basically what I've got is a very, very small sanding block that when you put pressure up with your thumb on the other side of it, you're getting a, a really a real flat surface so that that you're just just taking off whatever's on the very, very top. In fact, if I use it dry, you could see real quick, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, you could see real quick that the original Whoever did this last, I can see all their little sanding marks because I'm, I'm, this is 1500, so this is only taken off the very top. So it's going to make any areas that are up nice and shiny, and any pitted areas are going to be uh, darker. But that's okay because that's what the gasket is for. What you really want is just the smoothest surface that then, then that gasket can, can do what it's designed to do. So once again, I'm just doing one little small portion of a time. This is how you, whenever you wet sand, add a little soap to it. And that helps keep, see I can rub that spot on the sandpaper and that's almost brand new again. So, and I'm going with the direction of this, this, and then this way, and this way. And that's because you don't want any scratches running this way because this is how that's how the oil is going to find its way out if you have any scratches you want them in the direction in this direction so that if anything ever gets into that little crack it's got nowhere to go so i'm just gently gently and not doing a whole lot here just coming across this surface looking for any tiny little ticks that are going to interfere with the gasket. That's the main thing. You want to take off anything high that's going to interfere with the gasket and leave anything that's low basically untouched. At least this is, you know, this is the get it done in your kitchen in a day or two process. Obviously, there's a lot of people that would just send this head out and and have it all have it all done revalved conditioned all that yeah I'm not gonna mess with any of that because I just put the engine in the car and I've checked everything on this head and it's flat and it's 
the valves are all okay. They all, all their seals are good. Somebody took this apart within the past three or four years, you know, just ju judging by the 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 R how old that RTV felt. And what I figured out is, see this hole right here. This was uh, they had to drill this out at one time because you can see that there, there's an insert that was put in there. And so with this wet set, dry, wet dry, wet wet sandpaper thing. You could easily, easily see that juncture. Probably even see it on the camera, where that insert was put in that hole, and that that explains why there's this extra gouging around here. So, with this, I'm gonna do a little circular motion with this 1500 because all all I can do is just smooth it. I can't. I can't change the the main geometry of that area if it's a little bit low. There's only so much you can do without taking it and having all your your surfaces machined. But I need this car to drive, so I'm putting this thing back together today come hell or high water. But as you can see, this has already gotten really smooth and this is doing doing nothing uh Nothing that you can't do in your in your kitchen. Well, you could do this on the porch. If it was a nicer day, I'd probably be out on the porch doing this. But they're saying it's going to rain, and I don't want to have to get. I don't want to have to move everything, and I certainly don't want water getting in into any of this area here. This is just the outer surface, but I can feel it already. Look at that. It's just. That's just gliding over that. Now in this is tiny particles of metal and and uh, and abrasive. So I definitely want to make sure that I get this real clean in here without uh, without leaving any tiny little bits. That's why you don't really want to just attack this whole thing. Just like at the dentist office. So that's why I'm going to do like kind of one area at a time as I go around. This will be the last I do up here because this has the least amount of damage. And I'm going to flip it around so that the water or nothing flows down in. So as long as I've got it like this. but. I'll show a close up of that surface. Okay, so you can see that looks pretty good. Still a little bit of that black here, but this surface is really clean except for some small pits but there you can easily see where that was inserted and so you can see how smooth you can even see if you look real careful right there you can see scratches that are going this way from somebody who cleaned it Lord knows how long ago and then this area up here is nice pretty much good this cast aluminum kind of has a graininess to it in general and that's where your oil comes up so you want to make sure that this is good and clean and blowed and blown out okay a few quick things about wet sanding one of the ways that you can make this go better is to wash the uh, wash the paper as you go, um, and that gets the particles out of the paper and allows the paper to last a lot longer, um, especially for a small project like this. I can do this whole thing with this tiny piece. So you can see right there, that's where I sanded it 
in a spot before I hit it with the carb cleaner and you can see the grease filled up the the pores really well you know so this part here is not as slippery of, or not as abrasive of course but it doesn't really matter but <laughs> the point is what I'm trying to show you is clean the part really well with degreaser and, and carb cleaner and then de then even degreaser if you want to but you want this surface really nice and clean and free of any oil that way when you sand on it several times like I've done with these other areas got my guitar pick here put this together so like if you see that area there that's still pretty clean and there's a little bit of soap there's soap in the water now I've got too much soap in the water and the way you know you've got too much soap in the water is it uh, it feels too smooth too quickly it's hard to explain but it's kind of a feel thing so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little bit of I added some more water to thin this out because you want it a, you want it a little soapy but you don't want it too soapy you don't want it super soapy you can almost tell by the sound I don't know if you can hear that hear it but it's smooth I'm always going to finish in the direction that the gasket basically like that that's going to be my last bit See, I just picked up a little bit of oil from that hole, and I could tell because I could feel it. I could feel it in the paper. That's how sensitive this this can be. I built a lot of guitars in my life, and I've learned how to do this from building a guitar. So I, that took it to an extreme there, but it basically it's just a, it's just a good way to know where you're what you're doing. So then you then what you do is when it starts getting clogged up with. And, and you'll get this like kind of almost frothy feeling. Let's see if I can get it going here. Where when you're doing a spot for the first time, see how that frothed up? That's the 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 metal mixing with the soap and create yeah, there we go, creating like al almost a um you don't want to use too much because I don't want this uh, dripping down uh, it almost creates like a, like a cushion for the for the uh, sanding abrasive so this is I already did this area here mostly I just want to show you how that frothing works so, so it gets frothed up like that, which is good. That helps lubricate it as you're going. But at some point, you want to get rid of that froth because the frothy stuff has the particles in it that you're trying to get rid of. So at some point, you rinse it out. And you just keep going back and forth with those two processes. And see, the guitar pick is good because you can, you can angle it like this. see that there we go so you can see I've got that tip right there so I can put my finger on that see how I can nicely just go right up in between those two valve springs even though it's not an area that really is sealing anything it's more just to prove uh, just to show you what you can do with some careful um, careful wet sanding of, of anything anytime you've got a surface that you want really really smooth it's like right in here this is another good you know this is because I can't get the pin out I tried to pull it out gently didn't want to come when with these cars if something doesn't want to come out easy 
then find out the right way to do it before you try to do something that you don't know how to do it right or you just flat out could just make a mistake by not doing your your stupid idea you, your stupid idea might be the right idea but you might not do your stupid idea right so then then your stupid idea really proves its stupidity because if not done right uh, that it is a stupid idea you know the, 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 the credibility or the stupidity of an idea is only borne out by whether or not it works a lot of times when people say something's a stupid idea it's like well yeah I guess if you don't know how to do C D and, and E then it is a stupid idea you know I'm sure the first people that cooked steaks probably somebody said hey that's a stupid idea why are you wasting all that time I'm just gonna eat mine you know until the day came when the guy that learned how to eat steaks that were cooked his kids survived <laughs> simple as that so whether or not it was a stupid idea in the first place one reason or another more of those dudes survived <laughs> and hence their offspring so was it a dumb idea who can say every day I sit in this apartment I get weaker every day that a car sits in this rain the floorboards fill up with water I have a Porsche 944 but I can't drive it now <laughs> okay so now we're doing the other side of this the piston side and so you can see from the gasket obviously this goes here this is uh, water channel anyway the main ceiling areas are around the uh, uh, these oil galley passages and, and the water passages so and then obviously the cylinder head is this so when I go to look at this yeah I want this clean here but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make all that mess it's not worth it to worry about this I'm just gonna carefully gently do what I did on the other side and this is so clean that I can see the the uh, milling uh, marks from either the factory or the last time this thing has been uh, milled but judging by this here from what I've seen that's still a lot of material when I've seen on uh, some videos where guys have had these things decked they come back and, and this is like basically the same as this so that's a, that's a fair amount of material to take off that's that almost adds up to about the thickness of the gasket yeah that's pretty maybe not quite not quite but you know and so that can that can literally throw your timing back um, back by the, well, the thickness of that which is like a degree I don't know something to consider <laughs> okay so I'm gonna make these nice and smooth everything is already pretty pretty good there's just a tiny bit of just corrosion from the um, water just a little bit of pitting up here but I think this is gonna be just fine with a little gentle cleaning okay so
Got my water and soap. Now you would think that you'd want to keep putting in new water, but you really don't because any particulates will just fall down and you want that that kind of um, slightly a tiny amount of grit in the water itself. So I'm going to do this time. This is going to be even lighter than last time. All I'm all I'm doing is just sliding this along just to catch any burrs or anything that it, this is actually more just a, a, a really good inspection of the surfaces because if you can just slide this around with your thumb just like that without it catching on anything then you know you know that you've got a pretty good surface so as I hit this I can feel it in my thumb I can feel that I've that there's there's a little more there so I'm just gonna gently work my way around this I'm not really scrubbing it's kinda of like when you're doing a um, when you're doing a tap you kinda of wanna go in out in a lot more in a lot more out you wanna just kinda of gently work it around and that's that's basically all I'm doing here I'm not scrubbing I'm not sanding it I'm just letting the tiny amount of abrasive and then you know you know you got it good and see it's starting to dry up but when you're wet sanding something you know it's good if you can just put your finger on it like that and the the sandpaper wants to just move real real soft and, and flowy over the surface you can go a little faster. I'm going a little slow just to demonstrate. But as you can see, that all I'm doing is just just like that. I found a black sock. <laughs> Don't need black socks, certainly not in Florida. Okay. So. Just like that. And that is very smooth. Where's my glasses? Yeah, that is, that is very smooth. There's no reason to, to take it much farther, than, to take it any farther than just what I just did there. I'll show you what that looks like. I guess there isn't a macro on this camera. This is not the best camera out there. There you go. It looks super smooth. Well, all I'm getting is the ref all I'm showing you is the reflection. There we go. That's probably more realistic. But as you can see, this is already in pretty decent condition. You can let's see if I can. Yeah, you can see just a little bit of the tooling marks. Let's see if I can get some of these tooling marks. Okay, so now I'm taking off these studs, and I saw this on, of course, on somebody else's YouTube video, but I'm just showing you, show you a little bit just how it's actually pretty easy, easier than I thought it was going to be. But I did find kind of a cool combination of wrenches that make it work real easy. So put this one on first, like that. And then come back with your nuts and the nuts have a little cut in them and if you put the cuts towards each other it seems to help lock the nuts together and then this is a nice um, a 13 but it's got the deep kind of throat to it and so it kind of allows you just to, to easily um, tighten this one up 
you know, like that, and then you can just keep going back and forth kind of, and then, then push this one, start pushing more with this one. So I'm like tightening and I'm, I'm loosening the whole, uh, the whole thing. And then at some point, just moving that will tighten up enough that when you turn them both at the same time, you're getting all those threads to bite. Whoops. So there you go. Just then keep your fingers clear of this, of course. That's really the, because as you can see, when it let go, it kind of popped a little bit. And they come out. Didn't even have to get out the WD-40. I got some right here. Didn't even have to have to do that, but this probably would help, maybe a little bit. Do them the night before, just like everything else. So I've got new studs around here somewhere for this, but I'm gonna do them in the car. I've seen people do that. Just makes it easier to kind of put the headers together and stuff. So we'll try that. So now I'm getting ready to put the head back on. I've got it sitting here. I wanted to let it sit here at least overnight and the night before um, uh, because my apartment right now is 72 degrees and the temperature out here right now is 71 degrees so these two pieces of metal are the same temperature they've been sitting together all night with no gasket in between so I'm just getting ready to put this back in place but before I do I've got to take this tube off I was just fitting this this is a little bit of a change from um, before I put I ended up putting this heater tube here in the middle of this line because I don't want too much uh, hot coolant flowing through here and just being recycled back in so this valve will, will be kind of nice because I can adjust that from basically no coolant flowing through to just a little bit uh, so hopefully enough to just keep this sensor in an accurate kind of range like that so I'll just, that'll be something I could play with but I figured I'd just put that valve in there that way I've got the option of if, it, if I don't want it on at all I'll just shut it off like that and then just it's almost like having both ends plugged so that's that. So getting ready to get it in place, get it torqued down. We'll go from there, one piece at a time. Got a nice day, so I can move a lot more relaxed. And it's cooler out like this. Been waiting all summer. Okay, so. At this point, I'm ready to start putting the intake back on. A few little things. As you can see, I've got this all nicely nestled together with my sensor, temperature sensor, and it's all been bled, and the coolant has been in here all the way up to this level, and then I tightened this up. This is the lead, this is the ground for the sender, Here's my heater valve, which is in the off position right now, just like a faucet, and then this is on. So this will recirculate the top, but I don't want that because it, it, will, it won't go through the radiator once the engine gets hot. So probably leave it like that. Um, we'll see how this temperature gauge works uh, with it all the way off, and then you know maybe, maybe try just a tiny little bit let a little bit through for this but I think it's gonna you know it's picking up the temperature of the water so I don't think it really matters if, it, if it's flowing or not but who cares I'd rather have the valve in there to shut it on turn it on and off if I want okay so that's that um, got all the spark plugs out I'm gonna rotate the engine a little bit before I uh, proceed just to make sure that the oil is kind of woken up again it's been about a week 
so you can see all and I've gone around and tightened all my hose clamps I've tightened these two nuts make sure those are the right spec and also these these two guys and also these two just to make sure I'm not going to retighten up the 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 rest of the I'm um, obviously not the head bolts so a few other things this this wiring is what I call sexy this is sexy wiring meaning every every wire kind of goes where it wants to go and it's nothing's being strained too much or whatever everything just lays really gently where it's going to be and how it's going to work that way it kind of has its own little you know role to play and and it stays out of the way of other things